So actually, there are two sets of challenges. One is that some people offer alternative theories to explain the same phenomena without the idea uh, of limited energy or limited resource. Other people say there's no effect uh, at all. Clearly, at least one of these is completely wrong, because you can't have an alternative theory be true if there's no phenomenon to explain. Um, my take is the, the more interesting one is the alternative theories. Uh, the idea that there's no phenomenon uh, just, just seems absurd to me when you talk about something that's been replicated significantly 600 times or uh, something like that. Uh, I spend much of my career doing literature reviews, so I'm used to going into an area. And sometimes I think, well, what if I had never heard of ego depletion and other people had done it? I would come in and see the state of the literature. Lots of people get it. Some people don't get it. Um, the, the failing to replicate, well, if you don't manipulate the independent variable, then you're not testing the hypothesis. So lots of the failures seem, seem to be in that. Now we can ask, why doesn't it work under those circumstances? Well, there should be some moderator variables, some things that uh, determine whether it's, uh, uh, you know, when it does and when it doesn't happen. My sense is we have very little in psychology that always happens all the time. Um, so you say ego depletion, does it always happen under all circumstances? No. Does it never happen under any circumstances? Well, again, it's happened hundreds of times. Uh, that's way, uh, you know, that's not just chance or luck or anything like that. So it happens sometimes under some circumstances, and, and I think almost everything in psychology falls into that. Now, uh, the limited resource aspect, the alternative theories, uh, over the years lots of people have suggested um, new aspects, new wrinkles, new ideas. Um, and I follow those closely. I have incorporated a number of them into my thinking because they make better points. I mean, that's why science is a collective enterprise. Uh, so the theory has changed, and I expect it may continue to change. And if we could identify under what conditions does it happen and under what conditions doesn't it happen, uh, that would be perhaps the most useful uh, at all. The, the, the idea that, you know, the, that there's not really a phenomenon because some people I don't replicate it. Well, I, 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 I don't get that. And you know, the, the. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it doesn't always happen. But it, uh, you know, everything in psychology seems to be susceptible to that. Uh, ego depletion has kind of been singled out because it's a big target, and the people who are trying to make their careers by by criticizing everything and and so on. This would be a big success for them to say, well, something has been shown in laboratories around the world and many different contexts and everyday life and in and out of the laboratory. If they could show this to be false, it would really undermine what we know uh, and, and the ability of social psychology to, to, to say anything. Uh, but I think that's preposterous. The, uh, you know, given the, the amount and weight of evidence, clearly something happens a lot. And, uh, you know, if if I come into an area and the finding only comes from one laboratory or one group and they get it and, and other people try and don't get it, then I'm pretty suspicious of it. But with ego depletion has been shown over and over many different contexts, shown by people I never met and had no contact with and different continents. So there's clearly something there. Um, the alternatives. I haven't yet found, well, I actually have <laughs> found one that's plausible that could get rid of the limited resource idea, although that's not one that anyone else is, is talking about. Um, but uh, what I'm thinking of happening, what I'm thinking is going on is, is there is some limited energy that's used in, in self-regulation, uh, and people act as if they're running out of energy. But those two, the reality of using up the limited resource and the way the brain simulates that, those are very loosely related. So you have more energy than you think you have. And especially when you want to start tying mental, psychological phenomena to physical processes, what's going on with the body's energy and, and so on, that always, that's a risky and difficult uh, thing. I, I think we need to do that, and I expect there to be more changes. Anyway, uh, certainly the theory, the way I think of it now is different from the way I thought about it 20 years ago when we started on this work, and I anticipate further changes, but, uh, but it is an important and basic principle of psychological functioning.